All right, so what we're gonna do to start off is try and get some language down and some notation down to make sure that we're all on the same page. So when we're solving problems, we can express our answers and they look the same. So we have uh, you know, the same verbiage and, and notation. So we're gonna start with interval notation. And uh, interval notation, we're gonna take something that you've probably seen before, something like this inequality here, which is expressed a couple of different ways. These two things mean the same thing, okay? They both mean all numbers greater than eight, but not equal to eight. To express that in interval notation, we put a bracket eight comma infinity bracket. And what that means is your left number is the smallest number. That's like your starting point. We're going to start at eight and we're going to go all the way to infinity. It's all the numbers in between and not including eight. And the reason I know it's not including eight is because of the parentheses. When we want to include it, then we use a different symbol. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. But a parentheses means that the eight is excluded. So I'm going to write down here that the parentheses means that is excluded. Now on the right side, notice it's a really similar problem, but this is a closed circle or a bracket. And so that means that eight is part of our answer and it's included in our solution set. So our interval notation for that, instead of a parenthesis, is going to be bracket eight to infinity parentheses. Now notice in both cases, I use parentheses around infinity because Infinity is never inclusive because we can't quite get there. Um, so we always have parentheses around infinity or negative infinity for that matter. Um, but whether we have a bracket or a parenthesis depends on whether that value is included or excluded. So the bracket means that it is included. All right, any questions yet? Okay, so if you have a question, um, you can write it in the chat, but sometimes it's hard to see, but please just feel free to unmute yourself and, and ask away. All right, so let's take this next set of pictures here of inequalities, and we wanna try and express them in interval notation. So for this first one here, we want everything less than five. Well, remember when we write in interval notation, we have to start from left to right. So this is gonna be exclusive of negative infinity to five exclusive. Okay, remember smallest number is always on the left. A real common mistake is some students, because your brain kind of thinks, all right, well, it's everything from five to negative infinity. That's incorrect. You don't wanna write it that way. You wanna write smaller number first to larger number. Okay, moving across the top to this one on the right, we have two parts to this solution set. So in this case, the left part is everything from negative infinity exclusive to one exclusive. Union, meaning our solution can also be in the next set over here, which is bracket or inclusive of four to infinity exclusive. So we have really two places where our solution set could be in. It can be in this part that goes together, or the union is like an or statement, this part, okay? But this is all one solution set. I have a quick question. Yeah. Are we gonna go over like logic symbols like um, there is there is one number such that blah, blah, blah. Yeah, uh, we won't do that for quite a while. Yet we'll do some logic, uh, but we will not do that for quite a while. Okay. All right, in the bottom left, we want to express this in interval notation. So it is inclusive of one to five exclusive. 
And in the bottom right, it says, in order to ride the carnival, a child's height must be at least 36 inches. So it could be 36 and above, but less than 54. So not equal to 54, but less than. So that means it would be inclusive of 36 to 54 exclusive. Okay, moving on. And again, just ask any questions uh, that you might have. So now we wanna go the other way with it. Now we're given in interval notation and we wanna show that graphically. So this means from negative two exclusive to four exclusive. So that is going to be everything from negative two open circle to positive four open circle. Okay, open circle is, that means those numbers are excluded from, from our solution set. Next, it be a squiggly line or can it just be a? Yeah, good question. It, it could be solid, it can be like this. Okay, but if you're gonna do it, just make sure that it's, it's clear. You know, you're not just writing over the line one time. But yeah, um, it does not have to be a squiggle. All right, so for our next part, we have two, two areas for the solution set. It's gonna be exclusive of negative four to positive one, inclusive, so that's gonna be a filled circle. And then from three exclusive to infinity. So we just put an arrow because that's going to keep on going. Bottom left. We again have looks like two areas from negative infinity to two means it's all of this stuff to two exclusive and then from two to infinity exclusive. So what that set really means is all real numbers except for two. So our solution set is everything up to two, it kind of hops over two and then everything from there on out. Now, if one of those were a bracket, that would mean that the two is filled in, which is essentially all real numbers. Okay, so you have to be real careful on the brackets and parentheses because they can make a big difference in your answer. Okay, on the bottom right, we have from negative infinity to negative six, inclusive, so that's gonna be a filled circle. Union from five, so I'm gonna to have to estimate because it's not on the graph, to infinity. All right, do we have any questions on those? What does the union mean again? Yeah, the union means, it means it has two sections. So your answer could either be in this section or in this section. So it's like an or statement. Anything else? All right, you guys are rolling here. So um, we're gonna do a couple of these evaluating expressions. Totally different concept, okay? But now when we're evaluating an expression, we're simply plugging things in. So I'm gonna show you just a couple of nuances uh, to be careful of. If x is equal to negative three, we're gonna plug negative three in for our x's here and here. When you plug things in, be careful to use parentheses. So we have three times negative three quantity squared minus two times negative three quantity cubed. And the reason the parentheses are important is because this means negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. Okay, so negative three squared is positive nine. Whereas this means negative three times negative three times negative three, which is negative 27.
So from here, I'm just going to add these together. So 9 times 3 is 27 plus 54. Simplifies to 81. Okay, and next, I'm going to skip to C. And now we're going to plug in 4 for our x's and 3 in for our y. So when we do that, our numerator is going to be 3 times 4. Notice I did the parentheses over 2. Divided by the opposite of the absolute value of negative 2 times 4 times 3. So the top, we just follow our good old orders of operations, do our multiplication first. That's going to be 12 minus 2 in the numerator. Our bottom, remember that the absolute value works like a parenthesis. We're going to work inside of that first. So it's going to be the opposite of the absolute value of all this junk multiplied together. So negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, times 3 is negative 24. So we have the opposite of the absolute value of negative 24 in the denominator. So our top becomes 10, of course. And our bottom, the absolute value of negative 24 is positive 24. But then that means we take the opposite. So our bottom becomes negative 24. We reduce that. They're both divisible by 2. So it all that expression reduces to negative 5 over 12. OK, so two main concepts. We did the interval notation and the evaluating expression. Any questions? <laughs>